This lecture is about electrical machine. So under the electrical machine, parts of the transformer. In the last lecture, we have seen the internal parts of the transformer and um, what is the working principle of the transformer. And now what are the major parts of the transformer when under the installation process? So this diagram is a cross section of simplified uh, transformer diagram. So this portion is only our internal parts, the core and the windings, these are all internal structures. So this is kept inside the insulating oil. So the oil, the oil is present in a tank container. The container is consisting of the insulating oil. The oil may be hydrocarbon composition. So that is placed uh, here. And after that, we have many sensors like uh, winding temperature sensor, liquid temperature sensors, and uh, different wall and uh, gas relay, buckles relay, breather, gauge oil, gauge indicators, and so many cross-sectional views. You can see what are the external parts which is connected for a uh, high power uh, transformers. <clears throat> So parts of the transformer. The first part is laminated core. The second is winding. Third is insulating material. This three comes under the internal, the primary parts of the transformer. So this already we have seen in the uh, last lecture also about this and, uh, and tank. This is about the external uh, uh, parts, tank, terminals and bushing transformer oil, oil conservator, breather, radiator and fans, tap exchangers or tap exchangers, buckles relay, explosion vent. So these are all parts are present externally for the transformer, for a high power transformer. As we have already seen, uh, transformer is used for many applications like uh, from the generating station, the voltage is uh, transferred for uh, high voltage of transmission. And then for the distribution, uh, 440 voltage, 230 voltage of home appliances, again, we have to step down the voltage. So different applications and where we cannot measure very high voltage and current there also transformer is used to measure. So it is also acting like an instrumentation transformer, protecting device, impedance matching. We have uh, uh, steel manufacturer companies are also using uh, uh, transformers to produce different voltages for different purposes. So this is the uh, outermost look of how the transformer will be. So this is called the tank. This is the tank. Inside the tank, the internal parts, that is our core windings are placed inside this. And above the tank, we have a conservator tank. This is also called as an expansion tank. We have a breather and this is explosion vent. From the name, we can say explosion vent. Whenever the temperature and pressure is getting increased in the transformer tank, uh, to avoid the explosion, it has to come out from this vent. So that is explosion vent. We have a bushing, bushings, and this part is called as terminals. We have relay circuit. The relay is a gas actuated relay. So whatever the gas which is produced because of high temperature in the oil, uh, the, the oil mostly we use uh, hydrocarbon material. So uh, the gases which produce the carbon monoxide, hydrogen gases, that is deducted by this buckles relay and the relay will get actuated. And the relay will be connected to the alarm circuit as well as to the open circuit where the uh, primary part supply is disconnected. So these are the major parts and radiators and fan. It's like heat exchanger, heat exchanger where the cooling of the transformer is taking place and we have fans also. Outside we have fans also. That is... Um, External cooling purpose is also present in the transformer. Going for the next. Laminated core, windings and insulation. So the laminated core, windings and insulation. So 
This is the image which is showing core type, shell type, and three phase core type. So this portion, this portion is called as the core. This is magnetic core, and this is called as winding. So first one la laminated core. So the core. What for the function of the core? The core is to support the primary winding and the secondary winding. And it is having a low reluctance path for the magnetic flux. A linking magnetic flux and it shows the path for the magnetic flux. So the magnetic core is having two main function. One is to uh, support the primary winding and the secondary winding. The second one is to uh, flow of the magnetic flux. It shows the low reluctant path for the magnetic flux. So that is about the laminated core. And uh, in the previous lecture, we have seen how it is working. Working principle is by electromagnetic induction and uh, by mutual induced EMF method, the transformer working. And we have seen what is the voltage ratio, current ratio, what is the equation. EMF equation, which is produced in the primary winding, secondary winding, and everything which is seen in the last lecture. So this is the core laminated or made up of. So what type of core will be a best one? Normally we say that uh, there is two losses in the transformer. One is called constant loss and one is called variable loss. The constant loss is a manufactured loss, which is uh, found in the magnetic core. So the constant loss is a decurrent loss and hysteresis loss. So this is a core loss, this is a constant loss. So to reduce this type of constant loss, you should use a material like cold rolled grain oriented steel materials. So steel stampings will be laminated back to back. So that is the, the term which is used, cold rolled grain oriented oriented steel material. So to reduce the eddy current and hysteresis loss, which is a constant loss. And uh, about the windings, windings are generally made up of copper. The main function of the winding is to produce the flux, magnetic flux. When an alternating current is given to the primary winding, it produces a flux, magnetic flux. And after that, an induced EMF is also created in the winding. So the winding is generally made up of a copper and the main function of this is to produce the flux and to produce an EMF. And it, it is also mutually induced EMF to the secondary winding also. So this is the function of a winding. And next one, what is insulation? Insulation to avoid the contact between the conducting material. Suppose we have these two windings, the primary and the secondary winding. There should be insulation. This should not get contact with each other. So if temperature is increasing, it gets shorted. Uh, primary voltage is different. Second, secondary voltage is different. So the, the, the connection should not get, uh, both windings should not get in contact. So we use an insulating material. So it is wrapped. The insulation is wrapped upon the copper winding. So mainly what are the types of insulation? We can use paper, cloth, this type of uh, insulating material. So the insulating materials like paper, cloth is used to wrap the winding. So it is used to wrap the winding. So it gives the insulation for the windings not to get contact with the conducting materials. The insulators should have high dielectric strength. So this is the properties of insulator. It should have high dielectric strength good mechanical property, high temperature withstand ability. So these are all the properties of insulator, dielectric strength, mechanical property, temperature withstand. Next part is about the tank. So tank only consists of these uh, internal parts. Internal parts are laminated core, windings, and the insulation. These are present inside the tank. So tank is type of a container only, very easily we can say it is type of a container where oil is present inside that. So this tank is used to, to protect the core and the windings from the external environment. In the external environment, the tank is protecting the core and the windings. And it is acts like a container for the oil. And support 
all other transformers SSRIs. So the tank bodies are made by fabricating rolled steel plates to container. So it is made up of steel plates normally, and it will be having a lifting hooks and sideways we have the cooling tubes is also present. Radiators, cooling tubes are also present. So to reduce the weight loss and uh, to reduce the weight and to reduce the stray losses, aluminum sheets can also be used to uh, manufacture the tank. But what is the drawback of aluminum is a little bit costlier, costlier than the steel plates. So transformer, uh, sorry, a tank is a container which consists of oil that is used to support the internal parts of the transformer that is used to support the winding score and uh, uh, these things are present inside the tank and the tank fabrication is made up of a steel plates container. And uh, it can be also made in aluminum sheets to avoid some losses. We can do it in aluminum sheet, but it is costlier. So this is the outlook of the tank. The figure is the outlook of a tank, how the tank will be with the cooling tubes to cool the oil inside. So here uh, you have a link also. This link is for the working principle of your uh, normal basic transformer. If you want detail about the working principle, we can see this link also. Next is about terminals and bushing. Terminal, terminal connection is to connect any input or output voltage. It is used to connect a voltage, that is a terminal. So for connecting incoming and outgoing cables. So this is present in the transformer. All equipments will be having the terminals where we have to take uh, give input and uh, output has to be taken. So that is terminals. And what is bushings? Bushings are sort of an insulators that forms a barrier between, I will show the diagram. Ah, this is bushing. So this is bushing. This is an insulator that is between your terminal and the tank. So it is in between your terminal and the tank. So that this should not get uh, uh, connecting this uh, windings and not get uh, shorted. So in between you have this bushing, insulating material. For HV system, we have a cond condenser type of bushing and for an LV system, we have porcelain or epoxy material bushing. So bushings or insulator that forms a barrier between the terminals and the tank. They are mounted over the transformer tank. They say they serve as a safe passage for the conductor connecting terminals to the winding. So they are made up of porcelain or epoxy resin. So this is the material which is used for bushing. So what is next? Next is transformer oil. So the oil is present inside the tank. So this is a structure of a diagram which shows that the core and the winding which is inside the tank. The tank is consisting of the transformer oil. So this is the oil flow, pump and through the wall, the oil is flowing. And there's a heat exchanger where it is getting cooled. And this conservator tank is also called as expansion tank. So fan is used for a forced cooling also. It's also externally, it is used to cool the oil. So once if it is connected to the load, and transformer is connected to the load, it got heated up. When the current increases, it got heated up. So the oil gets heated. So beyond some certain level, there is a flash point. Some markings can be found. So to avoid that, the oil is continuously uh, made in a constant temperature and below the flash point temperature. And sometimes we can also say that the transformer oil, so it, it will expand and contract according to the temperature change, it can expand and contract. So for that also, we have to maintain a certain temperature. So, and uh, the first point for this, transformer oil is used to preserve the transformer core and the winding to preserve it. So transformer oil is also known as insulating oil, stopping the arcing, act as a coolant, stable at high temperature, prevent oxidation, the cellulose made paper insulation to prevent oxidation 
of the cellulose made paper insulation. So these are the properties which the transformer oil is having. So what is this oxidation? What is this means? Uh, actually, when it is getting heated up, there will be moisture and water content in the uh, inside the tank. So this will be absorbed by the insulating material, paper or cloth. So it will observe and then it will release back to the oil. So the oil should not get contaminated. The oil uh, should not uh, get oxidized. So to prevent this, the tank of the oil is always used to flow, flow and uh, we'll be having the sensors, temperature sensors, and uh, we have a, a breather. So breather circuits there. The moisture is removed. Moisture is removed and we are protecting the oil from contamination. If this oxidation is keep on happening, sludges will be formed. And uh, in that oil, the sludges may not be getting dissolved. So that will be an obstruction for the cooling of the oil. So that will be an obstruction. So we want the insulating oil to be in a correct temperature. So it should not go beyond certain temperature. And it, it cannot be in IC temperature, it cannot be less than the pore point. Uh, if it is like that, then the flow problem will be there. Resistance, viscosity problems will be there. So the mineral oil, which is used in the transformer is in, uh, composed of this hydrocarbon. So that is an example, aromatic, paraffin, naphtha, and olefins are used. Aromatic, paraffin, naphtha, and olefins are used. Probably in India, we go with paraffin. Paraffin uh, uh, mineral oil is used. And all many places in our country and across the country, they use the uh, paraffin because it is widely available. So we use paraffin. But each oil is having some disadvantages and some advantages, some limitations are there. But even uh, we feel better with paraffin, with our warm temperature in our India, we feel better with paraffin. We'll see what is the difference of this paraffin and naphtha oil. So what is the limitations and what is the difference? So from the next. So naphtha oil is more easily oxidized. Naphtha oil get easily oxidized. Once it is getting oxidized, what will happen is sludges will be formed. Sludges are found in the oil. Some sludges will get dissolved. Some sludges may not get dissolved and it will get precipitated and at the bottom of the oil. So that will make a trouble to cooling. The cooling system will get uh, abstract. So that is a problem with this. So naphtha oil is also easily getting oxidized and the sludge in the naphtha oil is soluble. But this uh, uh, sludge is, no, it is soluble. So it is getting dissolved. So the, the sludge is not precipitated in the bottom of the transformer. So the sludges will not be found in the bottom of the transformer. So this will not going to disturb the cooling system. Cooling system will be as usual uh, taking place. It is not going to disturb the cooling system. Next difference we are going to see about the profit. Paraffin oil. So this is a low oxidation, but even though it is a low oxidation, the sludge which is found, you know, that is insoluble in oil. So when it is insoluble in oil, that becomes an abstract for the cooling system, and that will get uh, uh, precipitated at the bottom of the transformer without soluble. So this leads to high pore point. It requires a very high pore point. And although it's not an issue in a warm climate like India. So moreover, and it is more available. So we go for the profin oil. So the sludges is not, the disadvantages is the sludges is not getting dissolved in the oil. The sludges are precipitated at the bottom. And it is going to be abstraction for the cooling of the system. But it will not be much because it is, less oxidized and the pore point is going to be high pore point is a flowing point pore is flowing flowing point so that is it will be high so the oil is having that uh, property when the temperature raises it will expand the volume of the oil will get expand 
and the temperature is less, the oil will be in the uh, condition of uh, less volume. So it can expand and it can contract. So the oil has this property. According to that, uh, the oil which is present in the tank will have the pump pump and uh, pipe through the pipe it will flow to the conservator tank top tank top one more tank is there that is for the expansion purpose so graphene is commonly used in many countries since it is availability is more so here also in india also we use the paraffin oil only. okay next properties of transformer oil any oil any oil has some certain properties so what are those properties? First is called as the flash point. What do you mean by flash point? The chances of fire hazards. After that certain point, there is a chance of fire. So it is the temperature at which the oil give enough vapor to produce the flammable mixture. So that flash point of the transformer is more than 140 degrees centigrade. So after this 140 degrees centigrade, it's going to be a flash point. Core point of the transformer oil is the minimum temperature at which oil starts to flow. In icy climate, the oil stops flowing, will obstruct the cooling of the transformer. So core point is uh, a transformer is the minimum temperature at which the oil starts to flow. But in icy climate condition, uh, the volume of the oil is getting reduced and becomes very compact, contracting and uh, it cannot flow freely. So that is the pore point. But this may not be a problem in our country because we don't have such icy climate normally. So viscosity, viscosity means it is the opposition to the flow or we can say it is the resistance to the flow. Every liquid becomes more viscous if the temperature decreases. If the temperature decreases, it becomes viscous. That is resistance to flow. It cannot flow properly. It cannot cool the system properly. So viscosity is also very important. So that is also maintained with some temperature. And next, water content in the oil. So water is a conducting material. So if water content is produced, the insulating failure may happen. So what is the allowed level of the water? So whenever the temperature of the oil is raised, Water is produced, moisture is produced. So the water should be 50 ppm, parts per million, 50 ppm. So this is measured by the colometric call Fisher titrator. So very accurately, it has to be measured, 50 ppm. So that is measured by colometric, colometric call Fisher titrator. So the water content should not go more than 50 ppm. It loses its uh, dielectric property. It loses its insulating property because it is a conducting material. So, so next property is the breakdown voltage of the transformer, or we can say it is a dielectric strength of the transformer. So it is considered to be, you, uh, oil can be safely be used in transformer. It's considered at 30 kV. Actually, how they are doing is they will keep two electrodes in the oil and they will start giving the high voltage to the electrodes. At one stage, arcing may come from the electrodes. So that voltage is 30 kV. Beyond that voltage, it is called breakdown voltage. A low value indicates presence of moisture content. If it is a good value, more than 30 kV, oil is not contaminated, the oil is in good stage. So if it is going to be less than the breakdown voltage is going to be less than 30 kV, the, the arcing starts before this in a less voltage, then it indicates that the contamination of oil, moisture content in the oil, and uh, some of the sludges were present in the oil, and some of the conducting materials were present in the oil. So these are the important properties of transformer oil. The first one is the flash point. Second is the four point. Third, viscosity of the transformer oil, water content, breakdown voltage of the transformer oil. The two electrodes are kept inside the oil and voltage is given to the electrode and they will be measuring at what voltage a spark or arcing is coming out. So that is measured. So if it goes beyond that voltage, then the contamination of water, you have to test the oil. 
it's getting contaminated you have to test the oil change the oil for a better cooling system next is the oil conservator so the conservator tank is present at the top of the main tank so this is also called as an expansion tank so it is mounted on the top of the main tank so the conservator tank is filled partially so it will be partially and this is called a meter so this is called as a meter so this meter is called as a amolg uh, that is uh, yeah magnetic oil level gauge indicator yeah magnetic oil level gauge indicator is uh, fitted to the conservator to indicate the oil level inside so the oil will be keep on the level will be keep on changing so under the time of expansion the oil may increase and at the time of contraction the oil may get decreased so that for that purpose to the expansion and contraction of the oil the conservator tank is used and this is mounted on the top of the main tank next one is breather so we will see the diagram the breather the breather is uh, main function is to prevent the moisture the moisture content has to be prevented so when the oil is getting heated up when it is connected to the load the transformer is connected to the load oil will get heated up so hot air comes from out of the conservator through the pipe during cooling the air is sucked through the same pipe so this is called as the breathing action of the transformer so when the oil is getting heated the oil uh, is a hydrocarbon material so it will be producing carbon monoxide and hydrogen gases which is very hazardous so these gases no this is released through the breather so through the breather it again sucks the oil uh, sucks the air so that air should be a yeah, moisture free air from the atmosphere it should be a moisture free air and this action is called as the breathing action of the transformer so the transformer oil will expands and contracts with an increase and decrease in the temperature so the air flow is taking place in and out so what is the material which is used in the breather is it's a calcium dichloride so that is used and or a silica gel probably they'll be using silica gel so that will remove the moisture from the air and it will give moisture free air to the conservator to cool the oil okay so the breather function is to prevent the moisture so whenever the transformer is connected to the load the temperature of the transformer oil will be increasing the temperature increases and it produces vapor air the hydrocarbon material will produce uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen gases which is very hazardous it's very flammable so that it has to be released in the through the breather and also it will suck back some of the air so that is called as the breathing action of the transformer when it is taking in air the air should be moisture free so that's why it is made up of a material called silica gel or calcium dichloride so to take back the moisture free air to the conservator so this is the main function of the breather next one tap changer tap changer this side you can see this is lv side maybe a primary side and this is hv side so according to this when you connect to point number 2 this much of winding is getting added this is common winding this much of winding is getting added when number of turns increases number of voltage will also increase when the point is going to number 3 the tap is moved and the automatic tap moving is also there manual tap moving is also there when the tap is moved through the point number 3 here when it uh, touches the switch number 3 then this much this much of winding is added as long as the winding is getting reduced number of turns is getting reduced our voltage is getting reduced at the output level so whatever the required output level we can change uh, some purpose for some applications we need different output level so according to that the tap changer is used to take different outputs so tap changes are used to adjust the output voltage or secondary voltage of the transformer they are designed to change the turns ratio the transformer as required 
so we cannot uh, inbuilt every time uh, many transformers to get many output voltages so that is quite is not economical so we can use a tap changing system easily we can change the tap the windings will be added or the windings will be reduced according to what the required output voltage so there are two types of tap changes so we can use on load tap changes and off load tap changes also when the uh, transformer is in loaded condition loaded condition that time also we can change the tap or if it is in off loaded condition without the load that time also we can keep the tap changing so this is tap changer which is used for different output or different secondary voltages for adjusting the different voltages for different applications the next one is very important is called backholes relay backholes relay it is used in oil master transformer which is more than 500 kv the very high 500 kv so this relay is a gas actuated relay which protects the transformer from the internal fault so this is actually main tank so the main tank only will be having the internal parts of the transformer so the backholes relay is connected between the main tank and the conservator so it is connected between the main tank and the conservator in between that we have this backholes relay so whenever there is a short circuit occurring so the transformer oil will produce heat so oil generate enough heat to decompose the oil into hydrogen carbon monoxide methane gases this all hazardous gases hydrogen is very hazardous carbon monoxide methane gases are produced so the relay is going to sense that it, it, it consists of a diaphragm so the diaphragm is moved where due to the gases and uh, the mercury switch will get moved and it is one part is connected to the alarm circuit and another part is connected to the trip circuit so one alarm you will get the alarm and one is called trip circuit trip it will trip the uh, supply current to the primary winding and in, it interrupts the current flow it stops the current flow so when there is too much of uh, uh, high temperature in the oil to avoid the hazardous gases hydrogen carbon monoxide and methane this alarm circuit will be activated so that is gas activated relay so which is used in uh, uh, more than 500 kv a transformer oil immersed transformer because it is a little costlier so in small transformers may not be used they will use other types of sensors like pressure sensors and uh, the uh, uh, what is that sensors will be used fire detectors and other sensors but here we use for high power high power uh, transformers so that is used to measure or um, that is a gas actuated relay to protect the internal fault of the transformer to the next slide explosion vent explosion vent so it is a metallic pipe provided with the aluminum diaphragm fitted at the exposed end of the vent an excessive pressure of oil is developed in the conservator tank the diaphragm will rupture and the oil in the main tank escapes through the vent so you can see the picture here explosion vent protects the transformer tank during the sudden build of oil pressure the sudden vent of oil pressure may not go up to this stage we have different sensors we have a temperature sensors we are using lm35 temperature sensor different types of temperature sensors are there rtd thermocouple thermopile bimetallic strip lm35 ic sensors here what we are using is uh, ic sensors like so that is going to sense the winding temperature oil temperature and we have uh, uh, what is that uh, oil uh, oil level detectors so this may not happen but at the last stage when sudden pressure when sudden pressure overloaded or something short circuit sudden pressure comes so at that time it has to be released out so it escapes from the tank so that the diaphragm get rupture and the oil in the main tank escapes through the vent so that explosion vent protects the transformer tank during the sudden build of oil pressure 
soil is getting pressurized because of the temperature only if the cooling system and other system other sensors are uh, continuously monitored and maintained this may not happen so that's it about the uh, external and internal parts of the transformer for a high power transformers thank you for listening